It's that time again for another segment of Rule Review. And the topic? Shooting. Stick around. Hello everyone, it's great to have you back again for more rules talk and video instruction here at the Officials Institute. My name is Josh, and our review on shooting is coming up. But first, I want to take a brief moment to give a heartfelt thanks to all of you who sent in donations to the Officials Institute. Thank you. Your generous support is very much appreciated, and every contribution you make helps to keep all of our content free for everyone to watch and enjoy. If you too want to help support the Officials Institute, consider making a donation of your own by clicking the link above. Or simply become a subscriber and share this video with other officials or even coaches and players because the more people that understand the rules, the better the game will be. When talking about shooting in relation to fouls, we encounter a few different rules in the rules book, like the act of shooting and continuous motion. Both of these rules can be quite relevant when determining whether a foul happens during a shot and whether or not to count a made basket. And since the ruling falls entirely on the official's judgment, understanding when the act of shooting begins is paramount to a proper ruling. So let's go ahead and begin our act of shooting for complete comprehension of shooting. Roll those clips. On our first clip, we see a player on a fast break go up for a layup and gets fouled along the way with the official waving off the shot, ruling the foul before the shot. Let's zoom in and analyze this play. As the player picks up the ball and heads toward the basket, we as officials need to ask several questions to determine whether or not to count the basket. The first and foremost question is did the act of shooting begin and this answer is not as cut and dried as we would like it to be, because according to Rule 4.41.2, a player is trying for a goal when the player in the official's judgment is attempting to throw for a goal. This means we as officials get to decide when a player is shooting the ball. This unfortunately allows for a wide latitude of opinion. So let's break down the rule and try to simplify it for a better understanding. Rule 4.41.3 tells us, the try starts when the player begins the motion which habitually precedes the release of the ball. So that must mean he can only be shooting here, correct? Right before he releases the ball. Or wait, maybe it starts here, as he starts to extend it toward the basket. But what about here, where he pulled the ball up to his head? Or right before that? Or before that? You get the point. Any of these points could be used as the starting point that precedes the release of the ball. But if there were no players around, would you change your starting point, or would it start the same way? Let's imagine just that. Take all the defenders away. What do you think this player is going to do? He's going to shoot the ball, right? And he's still dribbling at this point, so he can't possibly be shooting. But the moment he picks up the ball, ending his dribble, he only has two options pass, or shoot. So what is he doing at this particular moment? There's no one around to pass to, so that only leaves an attempt to throw for goal. Now add the players back. It doesn't change anything. He still only has two options, and no one to pass to, so he has still started the act of shooting. It's not the shooter's fault he was fouled. He was going to perform the same shooting action regardless of whether he gets fouled or not. So, in this case, the foul happened during the act of shooting, and the continuous motion rule 4.11 allows for a player to complete the usual foot or body movement. What does the player do after getting fouled? Continues to make a normal layup, just like he would if he didn't get fouled. Don't penalize the shooter for illegal contact by his opponent. This play should have been ruled a foul in the act of shooting, and applying the continuous motion rule counted the two points and awarded one free throw at the line. Let's watch it again.
The next clip shows a dribbler trying to beat a double team when he makes a spin move to the bucket and gets fouled. The official waves off the shot and rules a one and one Let's zoom in and take a closer look to see what happened. As the player picks up the ball and starts to make a move to shoot, the defender grabs the arm in an attempt to prevent a shot. We can see the ball handler look over his shoulder at the basket indicating a drive to the basket, and then, as he spins that way, actually shoots the ball, which solidifies the probability of his intention to shoot the entire time. But when did the act of shooting begin? Backing the play up, we start where the player picks up his dribble, and note the options available at this point are to pass or shoot. Even though there are available players that a possible pass could be made, we have already concluded he was planning to shoot the ball from the beginning, so using this point as the beginning of the act of shooting is a reasonable one. As the player begins to spin to get around his defender, that is when the arm is grabbed and held. But remembering the rule explicitly states that if a player is pivoting or stepping when fouled, may complete the usual foot or body movement. So this spinning action, when properly applying continuous motion, should be allowed to finish thus making it a shooting foul. Go ahead and watch that one again. The next clip has a shot into a rebounding situation, and after multiple attempts to put the ball in the basket, a shooting foul is called by the lead. But was he shooting? Referencing Rule 4.41 again, the act of shooting begins with the start of a try or tap for goal. And a tap for goal is the contacting of the ball with any part of a player's hand, an attempt to direct the ball into his or her basket. Watching this play again, we can see the offensive player jump and tap the ball on the first bounce of the rebound, and after missing that one, goes up again for a second attempt. This time, as soon as the player contacts the ball, the defender pushes him in the back. Because this foul happened while the offensive player was tapping the ball for goal, he is considered in the act of shooting. The foul, as called by the official, was correctly ruled a shooting foul. Here's that play again. In our last video, a post player receives a pass and immediately spins and shoots the ball, but getting bumped by a defender who had jumped in the air. The official rules the foul as a shooting foul. Easy one, right? Well, let's take a better look. The offensive player is 100% in the act of shooting, and, as the rule states, that act of shooting includes the airborne shooter. So even though the ball was released from the hands of the shooter, as long as that player remains airborne, any foul would be considered a shooting foul. But look a little closer. Because that same airborne shooter loses shooting status once they touch the playing court, like what happens here. And since the illegal contact happens after that, the foul cannot be a shooting foul, but a simple common foul with the ball being awarded to the nearest spot out of bounds. Let's replay that one and watch it one last time. That's our coverage of shooting plays. Hopefully those examples have given a little more clarity to when the act of shooting begins and when the continuous motion applies. And next time, when you have a possible shooting foul, you'll be better prepared to rule on it more accurately. Do you have a suggestion for our next rule review? If so, leave us a comment below and tell us. Or visit our webpage and send us a message. You can find that link above. Until we see you again, have a good game. Hey, you made it to the end of this video, which means it's time to hit those like, subscribe, and share buttons. Also, please consider making a donation and help keep this channel running with the best basketball rules video training anywhere. I'll see you in the next one.